here is Cosmic Vinyl. What's up, Vinyl Community, YouTube? Oh, I gotta get myself situated here. Hi there! <laughs> Welcome to the Cosmic Realm. You guys are in for a treat, because I've got some records. And we all love to look at records, right? So, uh, welcome to Vinyl, Cosmic Vinyl, Vinyl Finds number 31. I'd like to title this one, Man, I Am All Over The Place, because that's kind of how this is going to go. Um, these are many genres, genres, like John Ruz, like J-O-H-N, Ruz. John Ruz. Has, you have to go like genres. Anyway, many genres represented here. Um, for everything from new wave to um, um, anything from new wave to uh, classic uh, rock to folk rock to. Well, you'll get the picture. Um, so let's not let's not linger here in the intro. Um, Cosmic realm. <laughs> All right, let's just get this, quit the nonsense and get going here. What we were listening to on in the intro there is a little Love and Rockets. This is a brilliant LP, by the way. Um, Freaking love it. I've had this album for a long time. I remember this first crossing my path as a young man watching MTV. Um, and I believe the track was called So Alive, and I just thought that that sounded, his voice was like just so drony, and, and the music was just like this pulsing uh, new wave jam. It was so, so good. And this out, that's probably not even the best track on this record. You guys should check this. Uh, Love and Rockets, amazing record. Um, self-titled LP. I love their covers too. They always got that, that black, white, red scheme. So anyway, um, that's not, that's just what we're listening to. First off, going to start off with some uh, VCLT. Um, this is something I've been, uh, I should have probably thanked. I didn't want it to be part of my vinyl uh, tag video. Uh, so I just kind of held on to it for a vinyl finds video to, rather than show it on there. But I have, I've, I've got some surprise VCLT after the first of the year um, I, I was not expecting. It. Um, it's from Beth from B-Sides um, channel. If you haven't checked her out, uh, into a lot of soundtracks, a lot of 80s stuff. Um, great, <laughs> just a killer collection. Um, she VCLT'd me a while back. I showed it the Warrior soundtrack without the cover. So when I saw it, I thought maybe she had run into a cover. But then as I'm opening the package, I'm, I, I catch a glimpse of the title of, of the, the content within. And I remember we had had a conversation about this movie. And uh, again, one of my all-time favorite coming-of-age movies. Not a lot of my friends even knew about, you know, even talk. I mean, I'm basically, when I ask people about this movie, they don't know anything about it. It's pre-Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It's post-Porky's. You know, Porky's was kind of that first, you know, that first kind of raunchy teen comedy about high school kids trying to get laid and stuff. And then there was this, the last American version. Um, I shit you not, I cannot, I have not been able to find this DVD anywhere. And um, then Beth uh, showed it 
and the soundtrack on a, a video. It's been a while back now. And I was just, I almost threw up a little bit because I was so excited about it. I loved this movie so much. This is so much edgier than Fast Times. In fact, I feel like Fast Times borrowed a lot of content from this, including a, a teen pregnancy thing and, um, you know, the whole uh, teens trying to get laid. Anyway, um, but yeah. You should check out this movie if you can find it anywhere. As I'm looking at this, it almost looks, it's not marked or anything. It almost is like, almost like it's a bootleg or something. But either way, I was so, Beth, I appreciate this in so many ways. I've watched this three times since you sent it to me. This is amazing. Um, then, a little icing on the cake, the soundtrack. This is an absolutely killer killer soundtrack of new wave tunage um that's that's the that's the movie poster right there the original and there's some scenes on the back here it's a movie about three high school kids and they couldn't be any different one kid's kind of a shy uh kind of wants to be cool he's kind of an average kid you know it, it was probably like what i would have been in in high school like i was a I was I wasn't popular, but I knew popular kids. I wasn't uh, I wasn't really considered a, a stoner, or, or but I smoked weed, so I fit in kind of in the middle, and that's kind of like Gary, the main character. And then his uh, kind of got his his fat kind of fun party animal friend, and then Rick, the one that scores all the chicks. So, but yeah, if you can lay your hands on this soundtrack has. Uh, Teen Angel Eyes by Tommy Two Tone, Do 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 Da 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 by The Police, Devo Whip It. It's got Phil Seymour, Better Luck Next Time by Oingo Boingo. Um, Are You Ready for the Sex Girls by the uh, the Gleaming Spires? Oh my God, that is a classic early '80s. Uh, it's got the waitresses. I know what boys like. Um, this. Even some early U2 on this. I will follow off the album Boy. Um, if you can find Last American Virgin or La uh, soundtrack or movie, man, I highly recommend it if you're into that. Beth, I oh, I am so, so appreciative of this. Um, this was probably the best VCLT. That's uh, one of the best. Let's put it that way. So anyway, yeah, just one of those. I was thrilled. So... Um, actually, there's a little bit of a, like a, Eli Roth does a little bit of a, uh, a Last American Virgin, um, interview on YouTube. It's like a four or five part, uh, interview you could check out. It's not as good as I would have thought it was going to be, but there is also a Where Are They Now from the cast of Last American Virgin as well. So, all right, let's dive into the vinyl finds. Um, vinyl finds number 31, um... I'm going to start off with this. Uh, I went to uh, Des Moines, Iowa, which is uh, an hour and a half away from where I live. Um, I had a doctor's appointment down there, so I went down there to... Uh, I like to go to the record stores down there. And I decided I'd never gone through these. I mean, there's bargain bins are just totes and totes of... un. The, they're not even cataloged at all. It's just totes full of albums underneath the shelves. So I pull them out and I go through the totes. It, I was probably there for two, two and a half hours looking through their dollar and three dollar bins. And I found this uh, right here, which uh, I, I'm, it's a Rhino, it's a 1982 Rhino re-released uh, by the, it's the Bach Tops Greatest Hits. Um, it's in just amazing condition. There's no splits. It's, it's superb and uh there's the back there i just love the cut look at their outfits i mean those guys are trying to do the hippie thing but they're just looking at there's a nice bunch of boys look how look at alex chilton there how young he is anyway this is a 1982 rhino re-release um it's got all the great hits uh it's got the letter of course uh cry like a baby um let's see soul deep neon rainbow um, and so this is, this is the good, a good, uh, comp here. Um, 
just some, you know how I give you the little bit of trivia here. I'm just going to give you something I found out. Alex Chilton was 15 years old when he first, um, when he did the letter. And, and being an impressionable, young, you know, young teenager, basically, um, it was rumored that someone offered him his first taste of, of amphetamine or speed. And um, he obliged them. And between the speed and the multiple uh, takes that they did on the song, the vocal takes they did on the song, um, his voice continued to get lower and lower and get that, that kind of smoky sound on the song, the letter that you hear on the recording. And um, the, it was that became totally basic perfect for the song i mean i you if you listen to that song you can't imagine hearing it any other way so kind of a funny story that maybe it was the speed and um uh the multiple takes that made that sound for him but um uh another thing um the box tops toured with the beach boys at one point and um uh they became alex chilton became friends with with uh, some of the Beach Boys, and al had also, because of that, had also spent time with Charles Manson. So Alex Chilton and Dennis, they, they actually wrote a, a kind of a song, a parody song later on um, that um, I think it was called um, Sleeping, uh, oh, I Slept in the Same Bed with Dennis Wilson and Charles Manson. He was actually on the Spawn Ranch uh, with Dennis Wilson, and he, but he left because of some bat weird vibes that he got from being there. I wonder what that's all about, right? So anyway, a little Charles Man. That's that. The that's that won't be the last like Charles Manson um, connection in this vinyl finds video. Anyway, I picked this up because um, I got something that I'm gonna do in another video at the box tops later on. Then I got this. Um, oh God. I'm almost afraid to show this. I this is probably going to crush any cred that I might have with any of the metal people, any any of the psych uh, area of the VC. This could maybe even get me thrown out of the vinyl community if I show this. This is going to make me look like um, this is like maybe one step above or maybe below showing an Osmonds record, okay? Um, this is an album called Bo Donaldson and the Haywoods. Okay, um, now before you go uh, completely batshit crazy in the comment section destroying me, <laughs> um, look at these. First of all, this album is in great condition. So, um, and uh, I, there's a method to my madness from why I picked this up. But look at the guys there with their v-neck like uh i don't know what those are uh to, they're some kind of top but um uh these guys were probably most well known for two songs um one of them's called billy don't be a hero ever it was a one-hit wonder from uh back in the 70s and um it was originally uh done by a band called paper lace who it hit over in England, but didn't hit here. So these, but these guys made a hit of it um, here. So um, Robert Walker, Bo Donaldson, I believe it's this cat right here. But anyway, um, he 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 was discovered while touring with the Oz, the aforementioned Osmonds, um, and Billy Don't Be a Hero was a huge hit for these guys. Even though later on Rolling Stone voted um, Billy Don't Be a Hero as uh, one of the top, the 10 worst um, songs of the 1970s. Um, it was number eight, by the way. This has a gatefold, too, by the way. I'm going to show you the, the fellas, Bo and the boys. There's, um, you know, when we talk about that crease break when Eric, or Eric Weinbender and dust and they'd open up the and it would crack make that noise this was so new that when i opened it up it actually made that noise i've never had a i don't think i've had an album except for brand new 
But yeah, there's the Bo Donaldson and the Haywoods. It was a buck and it was in great shape. And I, like I said, I'm gonna do a bubblegum music video. I might include that because it, it kind of fits into the tail end of the bubblegum thing. So, um, and I actually like, I like pop music from the 70s. So uh, you can slay me now, but I, I, I dig Billy Don't Be a Hero. So <laughs> anyway, um, oh, what's next here? I got a bunch of shit, it's all out of order. Uh, this is this album isn't in quite as good a shape, but still was the bargain bin. I've seen this around a million times, but this is um, Peter Paul and Mary, and the album is album 1700. Now, this album has the hit "Leaving on a Jet Plane." It's also it also has a song that I the reason I bought the record. It's called "I Dig Rock and Roll Music." It goes, "I dig." Rock and roll music and a da 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 You know that you get the gist, right? But anyway, it's also got a song on here called "I'm in Love with a Big Blue Frog." I mean, how can you resist that? Yeah, this is definitely uh, this is folk. If you everybody knows Peter Paul and Mary, they're an American folk group out of New York City. Um, now I'm not really into folk music and the, the whole scene, but, um, you know, I do listen to Donovan. Donovan is, has some folk leanings. Um, Dylan, of course. Um, I think even Bowie early on kind of had some folky stuff too. So, uh, these guys have some great, this, this group has some great harmonies. Their vocal harmonies kind of pop mama and papa's ish. Um, and even the song, um, I dig rock and roll music, uh, the lyrics give a nod to the mamas and the papas, um, also to, um, I believe Donovan and I think the Beatles as well. Anyway, this is their seventh album came out in 67. Um, the leave it on a jet plane was actually written by their friend, John Denver. So, uh, I think he, I want to say he had maybe a hit with it too, but it's hard to say. But anyway, um, there's a song on here that I really dig that has a stand-up bass. And it's just prominent throughout the song. It's like, boom, boom, you know that booming, like, stand-up bass? Love that. So anyway, um, who'd have thought that I would, anybody would devote this much time to one of the Peter, Paul, and Mary records in our video. But I'm telling you, this is not, you're not going to see any grails here. This is all dollar bin stuff and... But just some really great um, music that deserves its due, and I'm gonna recognize it in front of the in front of the vinyl community in the world, coming live from the cosmic realm. Anyway, um, the next album is um, another great record. These guys had these guys were a hit machine too. Um, this is Seals and Crofts' greatest hits. These guys. I mean, I love these guys. These, they're kind of folky too, but they're more of a, a soft rock band, um, knowing known for their hits um, "Summer Breeze" and um, "Diamond Girl." Um, they also had other hits too, but um, early careers they were spent. They spent early in their careers they spent time in a band called the Champs, um, that also included Glenn Campbell and Jerry Cole who were guys that were part of the Wrecking Crew, you know, that were guys that wrote and played on a lot of hit songs during the 60s and 70s that, you know, they didn't really get credit for. In fact, there's a, uh, excuse me, there is a, um, it used to be on Netflix, a documentary about the Wrecking Crew you should check out if you can, if you can find it. But anyway, um, both of these guys were public advocates of the Baha'i, I hope it's Baha'i faith. Um, it's a religion that believed in the worth of all religions, that all religions had worth, uh, but and believed that uh, in like it, it was structured around unity and equality of all of all human beings. So. Um, whatever floats your boat i guess they were a piece they they were kind of a peaceful hippie type and you got that mood in their tunage too so but anyway in 1974 they played a Cal the california jam um festival for over 200,000 people 
Um, God, that's a lot of, that'd be a huge concert. Um, but they played alongside acts like Black Sabbath and uh, the Eagles, uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, um, oh God, uh, Deep Purple, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Rare Earth, and Black Oak, Arkansas. Yeah, there's another band that I have probably five or six albums of, Black Oak. Man, they never get any love in the VC either, and they're a good rock band. Anyway, Seals and Crofts, Greatest Hits, uh, Diamond Girl, um, uh, Summer Breeze, and my personal favorite, We May Never Pass This Way Again. I love that song. Uh, you could pick this up anywhere for dirt cheap, so, um, yeah. The next record isn't going to be anything that you can't find, but it's probably going to, it probably graduates up from the, um, from the dollar bin, though. You could probably find it more in your, you know, you probably get it for anywhere from five to ten bones, um, is this Turtles record. This is their, this is their first LP. Um, I usually, I've seen this record around. It's usually pretty, pretty beat up. But again, this is, I mean, no splits, no seeds, no stems that you don't need. Um, no, sorry, wrong poem. Anyway, um, the Turtles, uh, first record, great condition. Um, I, I, they do a, a, a version of Even Dis Eve of Destruction that I really like on here, um, and like a Rolling Stone. Um, I, I love the Turtles, man. They, I love their. Um, their harmonies, um, but they're, you know, uh, I think, you know, they, they got, they, they were, they weren't huge, but, um, but they, they, I think they have their place in rock and roll music. This song, this album is their first album, it's called It Ain't Me Babe, it's on the White Whale label. Um, and they were led by two vocalists, um, oh God, Howard Kalin and Mark Volman also known later on as Flo and Eddie, kind of a comedic type uh, vocal guy. So their first hit, It Ain't Me Babe, uh, was a Dylan cover. These guys are fun. Um, their music just brings a smile to my face. Whenever I hear like Happy Together, whenever I sing it, I karaoke Happy Together all the time. Um, I just I just love it. I love their tunes. Um, one one turtle member, Chip Douglas, went on to produce a few of the Monkees albums um, when the when the Monkees decided to be like a real band instead of a you know just produced for a TV show. Just a little trivia, you know you you get the trivia, you get it here, it, it, you get it. Um, anyway, oh here's another little bit of trivia. You see, it's spelled T U R T L E S turtles. It, when they fir their first uh, idea of their name was spelled with a Y instead of a U. You know, kind of like the bird, falling like the birds, uh, that kind of misspelling in the Beatles. So you, you get that, you get the trivia with with Cosmic Vinyl. Um, this next, now we're going to jump clear to a whole new realm of music. Um, this is Lou Reed. Um, Rock and Roll Animal. Uh, it's from the Best Buy series. It just sa it says it right there. It's the Best Buy series. Woo! Best Buy. Rah. Anyway, um, look at Lou. He's kind of got a little weird kind of a look there. He's got that short hair and the white like face makeup and dark around the eyes and the lipstick and kind of bondage stuff. But um, <clears throat> I actually... I'm not a huge Lou fan. Um, you know, I like Velvet Underground. I don't even own any Velvet, uh, which I need to get some Velvets. But anyway, um, I I had reservations about this because I'd heard that like the live stuff wasn't really that good. But um, and I don't need to tell you about Lou Reed. Everybody knows what, who Lou Reed is and what his history is. Um, but this live album has five songs. Um, from the, they're all from the, um, uh, Velvet Underground era and the musicians on this, and I am going to refer to my notes on this because I couldn't remember all their names. 
uh, Penty Whitey Glan on the drums, Prakash John on bass, Roy Col Ray Colcord on the keyboards, Dick Wagner and Steve Hunter on guitars. Now, when I put this record on, I actually has it has a kind of a a cool intro, like a guitar solo intro. I was really kind of surprised that the musicianship on this was very, it was great, and it was kind of heavy. Um, it's kind of heavier sound, and I was really impressed. I was really dug the like the musicianship, and so um, I was. That's what I was concerned about, you know. And of course, when you throw Lou in there, it, it, it worked. It worked out great. Um, actually, the guitar work on it is so killer. Both of the guitarists on on this record, um, Wagner and Hunter, went on to be in the second version of um, Alice, the Alice Cooper band, which uh, started around the Welcome to My Nightmare, uh, right around that time, that era. So, yeah, I. Uh, this, uh, there's another live album, uh, it's called Lou Reed Live, that was also recorded in from the same concert that this was. So this you could actually uh, consider them a, a pair if you picked it up. So cheap record, fun listen, uh, great rock and roll record. So yeah, pick it up. Um, this next one is probably the find of the day um, for a dollar. And I thought, God, there's, when I seen it, I opened it up, I thought, there's got to be something wrong with this record for me to find it for a dollar. But here it is, McDonald and Giles. Um, I mean, the cover's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's not split or anything. It's got your usual wear, but there it is, McDonald and Giles. Um, I don't know who the chicks are, but, you know, the guys, look at the guys are looking pretty, uh, Pretty dapper there with their suits, or then they got chicks on their arms. I mean, these guys, that's a great, I love that. It kind of matches the color of the realm in here, the pinkish kind of purple. But, and then the the gate uh, fold here, I'm not sure what's going on there, some kind of artwork, but um, looks pretty cool. But yeah, I picked this up and, um, I just expected it to be beat to all the hell, but it's not. It's on the Cotillion label. Um, yeah, the, these are the these guys were original members in the King Crimson lineup. Um, uh, they were on the album The Court of the Crimson King. Um, uh, some of uh, the guys in Crimson uh, or uh, King Crimson also played on Wake of Poseidon, their second album as well, but. Ian McDonald and Michael Giles. Um, this album met with limited success, although we here in the vinyl community seem to like it because I've seen it shown a number of times. Um, there's uh, Giles' drum solo on this uh, the song. Um, I think it's called Tomorrow. Tomorrow's people, children of today. Uh, so I, I can't remember how it goes, but. Um, his drum solo has been sampled by several R&B or rap hip-hop groups and um, including the Beastie Boys um, on their song I think it's called Body Movin so um, that's kind of cool right hey just a quick question who's your fa who's your favorite Beastie Beastie Boy out of the three of them who's your favorite mine's, mine's uh, Ad Rock he's so dreamy he is. Anyway, um, yeah, the uh, McDonald and Giles for a buck. Hell yeah, I'm gonna pick it up. I almost felt I didn't even want to tell the guy at the desk. We were having a conversation about the records. I didn't even want to tell him that I it, it was out of the dollar bin. I mean, he knew, but I, I almost thought they were gonna turn me around and say, "Ah, oh, that didn't belong there." But uh, McDonald and Giles for a buck. <laughs> Yeah, I got a deal. I got a freaking deal. All right, what's next? Um, no, no great shakes here. Uh, just a kind of another cool comp I found in the in the bargain bin. Paul Revere and the Raiders. Uh, there's Mark Lindsay and I don't know. Is that who's the other guy? Is Paul Revere? I don't know. 
who the hell knows I didn't really look it all up but um, I think this guy would carried the band on to later on when they reunited and it, it almost became kind of a comedy novelty act I've seen some of their videos on YouTube and it's it's actually it's it, I, I really am not into it what I am into however is um, I love this I love the um, Paul Revere and the Raiders. I think they're a very underrated band. Um, I mean, their music was, you know, their early stuff was garage type stuff. Um, it was up there with anything that anybody else was playing, the garage stuff anybody else was playing. Um, they were a great 60s band with hits like Kicks and um, Hungry and Mr. Sun, Mr. Moon. Um, Oh, what else? I mean, they they were Louie Louie. They did a great version of that. The Great Airplane Strike. These guys were amazing. Um, I even like the era of uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders with um, uh, Cherokee Nation. Um, what's the name of the song? Something res Indian Reservation, Cherokee Nation. I love that song. And the whole Cherokee Nation will return, will return, will return. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, do I do I appreciate like the Colonial Army outfits that they wore and stuff? Yeah, I mean to a point. I mean, I kind of dug it. I mean, it's just another gimmick thing from back then. Um, uh, Gary, Gary, uh, Puckett and the, and the Union Gap, they did this kind of the uniform thing. I mean, everybody was kind of doing whatever the Beatles did something, the, somebody else would do some form of it. Um, like I said, when it got on later and they were just came a novelty act, they were all wearing these out. It was, it was just, I, it was just a joke. Um, I couldn't dig it, but, um, anyway. Um, I'm an even bigger fan of this Paul Revere and the Raiders now after seeing the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because uh, uh, they play a pretty heavy part of the, the soundtrack and they're actually mentioned in the movie quite and their albums are shown in the movie as well so uh, by the way I have that soundtrack from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and I'm, I probably shouldn't spill the beans, but I'm going to do a video uh, coming up. It's like a, it's called a fam. I'm going to call it Family Tree, and it's gonna. I'll just. It has to do with the Once Upon a Time um, in Hollywood album, and um, I'll just leave it at that for now. But it's going to be going to be a cool video, kind of an original idea. But anyway, Paul Revere and the Raiders. Guess what? We've got a we've got another Charles Manson connection here. Um, a lot some of these songs on here are produced. In fact, several are produced by a fella named Terry Melcher. Terry Melcher um, also worked with um, uh, the Beach Boys, and he knew the Beach Boys. He also lived. Uh, he's connected to Manson. Um, because he lived in the house that Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate moved in there. He had lived there prior to that. And Charles Manson, actually, the, the story goes that Charles Manson visited that house looking for Melcher. And, um, but realizing that he had moved from there and that um, Sharon Tate and uh, Roman Polanski then lived there. So... And you guys know the rest of the story. So, um, again, another... We've got all kinds of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I mentioned that. The soundtrack, the Raiders. Uh, we've got the box tops. I mean, we got all kinds of Charles Manson stuff going on here. But anyway, uh, I love Paul Revere and the Raiders. Let's just get let's just get that. Let's just make that clear, Vinyl Community. Um, let's see... I know I did show this briefly. I uh, used it as an intro uh, to a video not long ago. Um, this is the Kinks. Everybody's in show business. I think I talked about the pastel cover here and uh, the cool gatefold and stuff. Um, I I love I like this record. This is kind of a 
you know, they took more of a kind of a Ray Davies took the band in a kind of a campy vaudevillian, the same thing that I hated that guy for, and the Raiders did. But this wasn't quite as extreme as that. But this was fun, and it was still great musicianship. And um, but I just love the song on here, uh, "Supersonic Rocket Ship." Uh, it was on the Avengers Endgame soundtrack as well. And so I thought, well, I'm going to get that record. It's a double album. It's You can get it cheap. And um, I just, I, I like it. And um, you, you can get this for probably around anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks. So, yeah, the kinks. And then um, I'll segue into this. This is just a, a comp that I picked up. Um, the kinks, 20 golden hits, or 20 golden greats. It's uh, one of those Ronco comps. Like, um, Ronco was one of those that kind of came... Remember the old KTEL records where they had the comps? Uh, it would be like a mixed... The, the 70s version of a mixtape on vinyl. Um, the KTEL records. Well, this was Ronco. They were in one of those kind of companies that came out with those kind of records. But uh, this was... I mean, this is a good record. The Kinks, 20 Golden Hits... Um, it's got all the goodies. Um, you really got me all day and all the night. Tired of waiting. Um, sunny afternoon. Um, Lola. I mean, Plastic Man. All those are all on that. So it's a good one. Um, this is the main event right here, what I'm about to show. This is um, something I, I think I've seen somebody maybe show it on the VC. I can't remember. If, who it was or if I actually did but this is Lonnie Liston Smith and I'm sure um, everybody knows or there's probably jazz, if any jazz guys or funk or soul guys I mean this guy's a uh, an American jazzy soul uh, funk musician he's played with Miles Davis and others and then he formed his own band Lonnie Liston and the Cosmic Echoes, and this is their album, Renaissance, and um, it's, I mean, look at that album cover, it's cool, he's, he's painting a picture of himself, and wearing the same outfit and everything, it's just, it's just kind of full, I'll show you, I'll open it up, another, another great gate, whoa, another great gate fold here, I'll give you a full brunt of it, and the inside is also, there's lots of symbols and stuff you can see along the edge here, all the way around the edge and the top and the bottom. Um, and then on the inside of uh, the gatefold, it tells what each symbol is, kind of like a, like a legend um, or an index to tell you what, what means what. And um, it's, you know, and then it lists the guy, the song lists. And it's got, um, to all the musicians who have helped to make this album possible, I offer my thanks. And then he signs it. Um, but on the back here also, the symbols shown on this cover represent the universal coming together of mankind. They're shown again on the inside of the album together with descriptions of their significance and meaning. So, yeah, this is great. I love this stuff. This is cosmic, right? I mean... Hey, it's the Cosmic Echoes. We're listening. This is, I'm telling you, this is just, this is smooth. I put this on and I was like, this is unbelievable. I was, um, there was a song that reminded me of kind of like a 1970s, um, like a cop show or something like Starsky and Hutch. Like it'd be playing in the background. And, and that's not a bad thing because there was some good stuff that played it. You know, those scores of those uh, old, like, uh, dr uh, TV dramas back then. So, um, anyway, it's smooth. It's jazzy. Uh, it's celestial-type sounds of the keyboards. Um, he plays the keyboards on this. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful record, and it's it's funky in its, in its ways. Um it's, it's really a mood-setting album, um, and it's a good mood. I mean, this is something to just chill to, listen to. There's a song on here called Space Lady that's really cool. Um, Mongo Tea, that's a good one. 
um, and the title track Renaissance. This really, I'm, I mean, I would highly recommend. I, I think I'm becoming kind of a jazz. I'm starting to get into jazz a little bit. I've now owned a couple jazz albums. I'd call this smooth jazz, space jazz, or whatever. But uh, yeah, Lonnie Liston and his Cosmic Echoes doing the album Renaissance. Um, that's it. It's a little, again, it's probably a long video, but I hope I kept you interested enough to, to kind of make it to the end. Um, uh, again, this is the first album of the new, or the first album, the first video of the new year. Cheers, big Diet Coke to you guys. Um, uh, like I said, I'll have that, uh, it's, it's going to be a soundtrack and I call, I'm calling it the family tr a family tree um, video. It's going to be kind of maybe something I might even use as a uh, a segment that I might do occasionally. So, all right, you guys. Um, you guys have a great night tonight with the rest of your night. Have a great day tomorrow. And I, I hope I, this will be a good Monday video to watch since everybody else are, you know, a lot of people put their stuff on the weekend. But this will be a good Monday view for you guys. Um, I love you, VC. Peace to you all. And, uh, stay cosmic because, uh, we're all very groovy out here in the cosmic realm. Ooh.